Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Innal hamdalillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu wa asyhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu أوصيكم وإياي يا أولاً بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون وقال الله تعالى بعد العوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير وبعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وأحسن هدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدع ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our praise due to Allah Almighty the Creator of all things the Sender of all prophets and messengers and the revealer of all truth. May the mercy and the blessing of Allah be upon all of us who are here tonight. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart, our mind, to understand the mission of a very special man in our history, and that is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa To my respected uh, chairperson tonight, and all the, the leader of legacy, the committee members, all students of knowledge, all of us who are here, they are all students of knowledge. In Islamic term, they call Talib al-ilm. And to all the audience, the brother and sister who are with us tonight, it is a great blessing and it is a pleasure for ourselves and my team to be here with all of you. And all of us are aware the reason we are here tonight is to know a person, a man who is so important in the life of all the Muslim and also in the life of people who knows him. Now I have started my muqaddimah, the opening speech, by reciting Qutbatul Haja. I would like to explain to all of you why we choose to start with Qutbatul Hajjah. Now this is the way the Prophet Muhammad began his talk. Before he want to deliver any of his speech or giving any advice, Qutbah of Jumaat, Qutbah of Eid prayer, and also Qutbatul Nikah and the person to get married, he will start with Qutbatul Hajjah, meaning the Prophet always remind all of us the important and the power to be grateful to Almighty Allah, the Creator of all of us. The power of be thankful to Allah, la in shakartum la If you show gratitude to Allah, show gratitude to your parents, to your teachers, in return you get a lot of blessing. But if you do not show thanks towards Allah, God who created all of us, if you do not show thanks to your parents, to your teachers, to the people who are good to you, then all the good things will disappear from you. There is the power of being grateful. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inhu. And secondly, after that, the Prophet remind his ummah to be humble and ask God to help us in whatever thing that we engage in our daily life. Because being human, we are not perfect. We have a lot of defects, we have a lot of weaknesses, so we must keep on asking Allah for help. And this only will come from the heart of the humble people. And then we ask Allah for forgiveness. May Allah Almighty God forgive us, forgive our parents, forgive all our friends who have done something that is not good for them and not good for us too. We keep on asking forgiveness because we need to forgive each other. 
because nobody is perfect and the best among the sinner is those who repent to God. And then we ask Allah to help us to purify our inner self so that we always have positive feelings, positive thinking, so that we become a better person in this life and also a better person in the hereafter. And then we ask God to help us not to waste our time doing things that do not benefit all of us. There are a lot of people spend a lot of their time doing things that do not benefit them. And it's a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of money. But Alhamdulillah, tonight all the, the wonderful people, the sisters and the brother who are here, you are wonderful people. You are people who have great mind yeah, to attend a great yeah, talk about a great man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. To all the brothers and sisters and also to uh, some of us have seen who are not yet a Muslim, I call them our sisters and also our brothers because all of us came from Adam and Eve. We are no stranger to one another. I begin my talk just now with an ayah that Allah remind us, Ayyuhan Nas, O people. Now Allah do not address the Arab or the Malay or the Pakistani or the Turkish but he addressed mankind. He reminds all of us who are children of Adam that indeed Allah is the one who created all of you from one male and one female, Adam and Eve. That's how we were created by Allah, from one father and from one mother, Adam and Eve. And from there, Allah makes us into nation and tribes. And that's why we are different. Your brother here, Hussein Yi, he is from uh, origin, I'm from Chinese family, yes. I, became a, I was a Buddhist, born Buddhist, became a Christian, and alhamdulillah, I became a Muslim in 1968. So I treat everybody as part of my family. We are different because Allah decided to make us different, not that we choose to be different. And Allah again said that the best among you and why he make us different is for us to complement each other, not to hate each other, to fight against each other, to humiliate each other. No. The reason Allah make us different, لِتَعَرَفُ So that we get to know each other, share with each other, complement each other, and help each other. This is the spirit of Islam. Not to be judgmental, but to show that we care and we are here to share. And then Allah said, Almighty Allah, the God of Adam, the God of Abraham, the God of Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, and the God of all of us, He said that best among you is not because of your name, because of your race, because of your color. No. The best among you are those who are more faithful to Allah Almighty. Those who are piety to Him, those who are obedient to the teaching and the commandment of God Almighty. This is the spirit that unites all of us. And I would like to also thank yeah, the organizing committee who choose to be known as the legacy. Yeah. I was asking Brother Muhammad Hassan, why do you choose legacy? So say legacy means they are here to inherit the mission of the Prophet ﷺ. Now Prophet Muhammad ﷺ also was a legacy that he was sent by Allah as the last messenger to carry out all the mission that been carried out by the early prophets. He inherit the mission of all prophets. All prophets were sent for the same mission to remind people to worship the only true God and not to worship other than Him. But what is the difference between Muhammad and the early prophet and the messenger of the same God, Allah Rabbul Alameen? The difference is, if you look in the Bible, you look in the Injil, you look in the Torah, the Old Testament, 
you will come across when Moses addressed his people, he will say, Ya Kaumi, O oh my people, O oh my people, O oh my Kaum, O oh my race. When Jesus, he will say, Children of Israel, because he did say that we are not sent, I am not sent except to the Lordship of Israel. And one day when he was addressing his disciple, he said, don't go to the Samaritan or the Gentile, but go to the children of Israel. All the early prophets were sent to a particular race and particular tribes. Where Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent as Rahmatalil Alamin, as a prophet that brings mercy to the world not only to one nation or one race. The same goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qul, ayyuhannas inni rasulullah ilaykum jami'an. O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sallam, may the please, may the blessing and the mercy of Allah be upon him. Tell the people, tell human, tell humanity that you are the messenger of Allah to all of them. And that's why today you can see that there are more than 50 million of Muslims in China alone. More than the whole population of this country, Malaysia, that we love so much. Alhamdulillah. But our population just reached about 30 million. But in the Ming Dynasty, you have about 120 million of Muslims just in China. That means the Chinese Muslims are elderly than the Malay Muslim. So if the Malay go to China, the China will call them Saudara Baru. New convert. Because they are new. Where the Chinese have adopted Islam, have become Muslim far earlier than Islam entered Malaysia. Yeah. And that's why if you go back to China, I used to travel to China, I like to share some history about China. In China, if you talk about Muslim, they always relate Islam with the Hui people. Hui children, the Hui people. Because majority of the Hui are Muslim. It's like in Malaysia, majority of Malay are Muslim. And that's why Islam is always linked to the Malays. Yeah? But Alhamdulillah, this is just uh, some uh, history. Uh, hist I use the his story because the story of Allah, so that we know where we come from. Now, to all the brothers and sisters, the man that we are going to discuss about, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number one, I just mentioned earlier that what is the difference of this man and the man before him, or the prophet before him. The prophet before him was sent only to a particular nation. Always remember that. And that's why you never see in the time of Moses that the teaching of Moses was conveyed to other than the Israeli too, the Jew. And the same go to the mission of Jesus was not being sent other than the people of Israel. But now, things change. Everybody is claiming that they belong to this group, they belong to that group, just because they feel that they should belong to that particular group. But if you go back to history, then in the Day of Judgment, all the early prophets cannot be a witness to all of us because they are not sent for all of us. But Prophet Muhammad was sent for humanity, the prophet to all race and all nation. And it, is, it was proven from his time that his mission was carried out to the Romans, to the Persian, to the Africans, yeah, from his time. But if you go back to the history of all the early prophets before him, you never come across that there is a non-Jew become their followers. Just yeah, 
a short introduction about the difference between Muhammad. Now we know that before the coming of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, it's good to know what happened before. The history of Mecca is known as the first house of worship. That was the house was built by the angel. Mecca is a house built by the angel because the angel used to make tawaf in Mecca before human was created by God. Because before we were created, Allah has created the jinn, Allah has created the angels. The jinn and the angel was created before human. So they were allowed by God to make tawaf around the Kaaba. Then later on in the time of Noah, Kaaba was yeah, I mean was destroyed and it was rebuilt again in the time of Prophet Abraham alayhi salam. We know who is Prophet Abraham if you go back to the history when you talk about Adam, the first man that Allah had created, he was also known by the people of the book as the first Adam, the father of mankind. He was not known as the father of human nation and tribe. But Noah was known as the second Adam, means the father of human race and tribe. Because from Noah, Allah made us into nation and tribe, not in the time of Adam. In the time of Adam, everybody was known as children of Adam. Class. We are all known as children of Adam. Ana cucu Adam. But in the time of Noah, then shu'uban wa qaba'ila was made by Allah. It began from the time of Noah. That means nation and tribes began in the time of Noah alayhi salam. And later on, Prophet Abraham salam, is known as the third Adam. First Adam is Adam, father of mankind. Second Adam is Noah as the father of human race and tribe or nation. And the third Adam, Prophet Abraham salam, is known as the father of the nation of the believers. Because from the descendant of Prophet Abraham, from Ismail and Isaac, all the Prophet was sent to these two Lineage. From Ismail, the firstborn, it ends to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From Isaac, it ends to Jesus alaihi salam. So Jesus and Prophet Muhammad, they are like twin brothers. Yeah, they are no stranger to each other. And every prophet that was sent by Almighty Allah carry the same message, calling everybody to worship the only true God and not to worship other than the true God. But what happened? There's a lot of things that happen in between. People tend to forget their teaching and they start to corrupt the teaching of this holy prophet, the teaching of the truth. They start to corrupt the teaching. They start to make modification. And that's why if you ask the people of the book, the Jew, are you still reading Torah, are you still referring to the Old Testament as your final reference? They will say no. Why? Because Torah, the Old Testament, is not being owned by anyone now. It's just kept in the library. What is the book that the Jew is referring to now? Is Talmud, a book that was yeah, collected by a group of the rabbis. They form a new book. Now, the same go to the other Injil. If you go back to the Injil, you will see a lot of difference yeah, from time to time. But when you look at the Quran, the final book of Allah, sent to the final messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, this book, is preserved until today. If you burn all the books in this world, and in not by one year, you can see the Muslim can come out with the same Quran, without one letter missing. 
is just to prove to us how genuine and the miracle of the last book. Why? Because this last book is the only book that memorized by the believers. More than a million of Muslims memorize the whole Quran. You don't find any scholars in other religion memorize their own book. Why? Because the book has gone through a lot of changes. And it's not easy for them to memorize and they come with a new edition, they change again. But the Quran will never change until the day of judgment. Now before the coming of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, all of us are aware that in the Middle East is known as pagans. They are known as pagan, the Jahiliyyah. Meaning all of them are not following any divine law. Everybody have their own laws. Everybody come up with their own yeah, regulation, their own law. And the law at that time is those who have power will always oppress the weak one. The rich will exploit the poor. Women have no rights. Before Islam, women have no right. Woman is been known to the man as a garment. You use them and then you can change them. You can throw them anytime. They have no right to any legacy, meaning they have no right to inherit anything. To the extent that we are aware that the Arab have a very strong culture and they love their culture more than anything else. And one of the culture that they protect before Islam is if there's a new baby girl born, you must bury her alive. It is a, an honor to bury a, a girl. When you give, a, give birth to a baby girl, it is an honor to bury her alive. It happened to Omar ibn Khattab, the second caliph. Before he became a Muslim, he does the same thing. He was married with a, with a lady, then they consummate for a while, then he left yeah, to some place. After one year, he came back. Now, his wife gave birth to a baby girl. And she knew that if Omar will come to know about the baby girl, he is going to bury her alive. So she sent this girl, the daughter, to the parent. Let the parent take care of the granddaughter. So when Omar came back, asked what happened to baby, to the baby shit, something happened, he didn't survive. And then on and off, this baby girl will be brought to their home. Because it's not his daughter, he don't care. But he play with this girl. He joke around, he carry this girl. After a few years, when the wife saw his interest towards this baby girl, that he loved her, he liked to play with her, so the wife thought that this would be the best time for me to tell him who is this girl. So one night when they're having a good time, she confessed to Omar. He said, my dear husband, I hope you'll forgive me if I tell you something. Because for the husbands, no problem. They say, do you know the girl that you've been playing with, caring with? She is our daughter. Immediately, Omar said, with the name of Lata Wal Uzza, because he believed in Lata Wal Uzza. Tomorrow, I'm going to look for her. And then when he got her, she brought her to the desert and he was digging the hole. He was digging the graveyard for her. And this daughter thought that he was playing with her and she's also helping him to dig. And after that, he just put her inside and start to throw dust on her. She was still thinking that he was playing with her. 
And after that incident, she was very proud. She said, I have uphold our tradition. Tradition die hard. There is a proverb by the Malays too, yeah? Biar mati anak. There is the pagan tradition, not our tradition, not the Islamic tradition. There is the pagan tradition. Now, that is how they treat women before. Women have no value. There's a lot of fighting, unrest in the town of Mecca. Mecca is known as the center of the world where there is always a lot of trade business activities. But what happened, then one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send the last messenger from this part of the world, from Mecca. And this was known by the Jew. The children of Israel knew about the last messenger is going to come from that. They knew about that. It was written in their book. That the last messenger of Allah will come from the desert, from the land of Bakka. And that's why you find the children of Israel, the Jew in Mecca and in Medina. Before Islam, you found the people of the Israel is in Mecca and in Medina because they all have the feeling that the last messenger should come from them. Because all the prophet was the descendant of Israel after Abraham alayhi salam. From Isaac onward, they are all from the Israeli prophet. So they always dream that the last messenger also will come from them. And that's why they migrate to that land with that hope. But Allah Almighty have his own plan. They have been very arrogant. They have been very ungrateful to God who have sent so many messengers to them to remind them about Allah and they kill most of the prophet. Even Jesus was killed by them according to their history. The one who crucified Jesus according to their history. To us, that means the Jew are the one who go after him. If you look at the movie, from Mel Gibson, yeah, then you know what yeah, the, the history of the Jew and the history of Jesus. Now then when Allah gave, allowed this man yeah, to be born, we know that that year is the year that Abraha, Abraha al-Asram, who was a Christian ruler, of the kingdom of Yemen. Abraha was a Christian ruler who wanted to destroy Kaaba because he built a big temple in Yemen, hoped that a lot of people would go to Yemen. But Allah had blessed Mecca that this place will be visited by pilgrimage every year until today. Mecca is a place that you see is not absent from the people who worship Allah Rabbul Alameen. Every single day you have hundred over thousand of people worshipping Allah just in one place in Mecca. Yeah. Then what happened when Prophet Muhammad was born? Now he himself did not know that he was a prophet. He himself did not know that he was a prophet. But everybody was waiting for the last messenger. And when he was born, and when he was presented to the people of the book, they knew that he was the prophet. But they are so upset because he was not from them. He is from the descendant of Ismail, from the Arab tribe. No more from the Israeli tribe. And from there, they declare war with the Arabs. Until today. Until today. It's an ongoing history. Yeah. Then what happened? 
we know the lifestyle before the Prophet Muhammad was appointed as a prophet. There was a lot of unrest, no justice. They have no feeling to each other. They can kill a person just because of one dinar. Uh, just because of some quarreling, disagreement, they can kill each other. And there's no law to protect the right of anybody. But Muhammad, when he was born, when he was a child, he was known as a very helpful person. He loved the young. He respected the elders. You know, he always helped the weak. This is known to Muhammad. Everybody just loved him. His uncle, Abu Lahab, was the first uncle who celebrated his birthday. The birth of Prophet Muhammad was not celebrated by Prophet Muhammad, neither celebrated by his family, neither by any of the companions, but it was celebrated by the uncle of Muhammad bin Abdullah, Abu Lahab. And we are the legacy of Abu Lahab too. In this aspect, we do celebrate too in the way that Abu Lahab have celebrated. We are happy with the, born, with the birth of Prophet Muhammad, alhamdulillah. But later on, when he reached the age of 20, he was known as one of the members of the United Arab League at that time. United Arab League. They call Hilful Fudur, a noble uh, organization that take care of the weak tribe. The minority will be taken care by them because if these do not exist, then the minority will be bullied every time. Their right will not be given. If anybody will take their goods, they have no right to fight back and ask for their goods. No. They will become a victim yeah, to the environment of the people who have the authority. So, Hailful Fudul was formed, an organization. And Prophet Muhammad, when he was the age of 20, he was appointed by the people because he was known as Al-Amin, the trustworthy, the honest man who never lie, who never cheat, who never show injustice to anybody. Now, he was not a prophet yet. He's known as Muhammad ibn Abdullah at the point of time. Then he got married. We know what happened. He got married yeah, because his honest, honesty has been uh, ordered by the business people and lastly by Khatija and the Khawalid a billionaire Miss Arab she is a very beautiful woman yeah? and a wealthy woman and also in the same time she is a very yeah, noble lady so when she appointed Muhammad to be her salesman to Syria, after that trip, she approached Muhammad because it's not easy to get a gentleman. It's easy to get men anywhere. To get a gentleman is very, very difficult. So Alhamdulillah, when she knew that this man, Muhammad bin Abdullah, is not just a man, the man with the noble character, He's known as a man with noble character. So immediately she sent her representative to ask for his hand. So this is a sign that if you find any good man, you can send somebody to ask for your behalf. <laughs> Don't have to wait for the man to come to you always. You know? Because now they are more lady than men. And the women are more career lady than the men. So don't be shy. Islamically, it is allowed. But the dowry comes from the man, not from you. Don't worry. <laughs> Unless you live in India, Pakistan, you still have to pay some dowry. You know? But we Malaysian, alhamdulillah, by, by right, all Muslim, they cannot take any dowry from the woman. 
they must give their dowry. That is part of the requirement to get married. So they got married, alhamdulillah. And the Prophet Muhammad, at that point of time, he was a businessman. But what is the difference between he as a businessman and other businessmen? He was not greedy, he will never lie, he will never cheat to the extent that he said later on, Man Rasha Falaisa Minna. Whoever cheat in business, he is not one of my followers. This is what our Prophet said. But before he was a Prophet, he is being guided by Allah because Allah had prepared him. But he himself did not know that he was going to be the final messenger of Allah. He has no knowledge about that. So he has been respected. He was respected by the people who love him as Muhammad bin Abdullah. When he sell the good for Khatija, if Khatija said, now you bring 1,000 bottles of honey to sell, Example, just an example. And he, she was said to him, I give you 20% commission of each bottle. See, one bottle is 10 ringgit. Every 10 ringgit you have how many? 2 ringgit. Accommodation is under your boss. Transportation under the boss. Company will, take, will be responsible on your transportation and your accommodation. Food, everything is under the company. You get clean cut 20%. So when he took this good to Syria, he would just sell them according to the price that the boss want him to sell. Not more, not less. Sometimes he would just give them free if those who don't have the means to buy. So people feel satisfaction when they buy things from Muhammad because he, will, he is not a greedy man, not like us. We also help sell honey, you know. And then when we ask the people how much is one bottle, the honey is just beside the roadside. Say in uh, Negris Milan, they say, where do you get the honey? Where is the honey? It's in the jungle. <laughs> now from the jungle out to the roadside now. How much you are selling? Very cheap, 25 ringgit. But if I want something more pure than that, is this 100% pure? Oh, 100% pure. How much? 25 ringgit. But I want something that is purer than that, or purer than that, 50 ringgit. You see, there are two standards of pure now. <laughs> that was when it was there. But when it come to Kuala Lumpur, the price will go up again. There's a difference. Yeah? But Muhammad don't do that. 20, 20. You ask the people who sell honey, are you sure this is genuine? Yeah, asli, asli. <laughs> do you know why they say asli, girls? Because they get it from orang asli. <laughs> they don't even know whether it's asli or not. They don't have R&D on, on honey yet. Yeah? Maybe the yeah, royal jelly, they have R&D, but not the normal honey. Anyhow, now let us be quick again because the story of this great man is very lengthy. But I just want to highlight the important thing. When Prophet Muhammad Wasallam reached the age of 40, he knew there is a lot of unrest, injustice happened in his society. He just can't take it on and off he will just isolate himself, go for kalwa. You know what is kalwa? You know what is kalwa, sisters? Kalwa is when you are alone, by yourself. Now kalwa when you are with one with somebody. Yeah? Kalwa is only alone. So he went to the cave of Hira just to find some peace. Just to find some peace, that's all. But one, in one of the occasions, after several trips, not only once, after several trips, his beloved wife, Khatija, Allahu Akbar, loved him so much that never showed disrespect to him. Even, even she knew that he was, his, he was 
her salesman before. Never once she said, don't forget who you are, yeah, Muhammad. <laughs> uh, I am your boss. I am your boss. No, no, no. A very humble woman, mashallah. Noble woman and also a very humble one. So one day he experienced something that he never expected it to happen. The angel Gabriel came to him in the cave and command him to read. Iqra, ya Muhammad. You know who is Muhammad. He is an unlettered prophet. He don't read, he don't write. So he just answered, Ma ana biqarin, I do not know how to read. He's very honest. He never said, okay, okay, no, I do not know how to read. <laughs> then he forced him, read. I do not know how to read. The third time, the angel Gabriel pressured him, hold him, and pressure him and said, read with the name of Allah who have created. Iqra, bismi rabbika lazi khalaq. And that's how he started to read. After that, he just ran out from the cave and never again he went back to the cave. Halas, finish. No more. What is this? Suddenly, a voice came to me. That means he was talking that maybe the devil came to him, the jinn came to him. So he never go back to the cave after that incident. He went back, shivering, met his wife. The wife, Allahu Akbar. See, he now said to the husband, that's why. You know? <laughs> why you go to the cave? Why don't you stay at home? And now you have problem now. No. If we will say this to our husband. You know? He now said that, you see. What did he say to the husband? He said to her, you are a good man, my husband. You love the weak, you respect the poor, you help yeah, the poor, God will never do anything back to you. And then he said to Khatija, Zamiluni, Zamiluni. Blanket me, because he was shivering. Yeah. Then he said, tomorrow I will go and look for my uncle, who is the people of the book. He will tell us, what happened to you? And it's confirmed, he said that this is Namuz. Namuz to them means Angel Gabriel. Alhamdulillah. But Prophet Muhammad have no idea who is Angel Gabriel to. Then, he was always at home now. No more to the cave. At home. Angel Gabriel, see that he didn't come to the cave, he came and visited him at home. <laughs> now he come. He came to her and he was blanketing himself, covering himself the blanket. Then Angel Gabriel said, Ya ayyuhal muddassir, kum fa anzir, wa rabbaka fa qabbir, wa thiyabaka fa tahir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He said, Who, you who have blanket yourself, it's time for you to wake up. Wake up and go out and call the people to the true God. Allah. Then only he know that he have a mission. Then only he realized that he was the chosen one. So he went out and start to call the people to Islam. The first person that he called is his wife, Khatija. Khatija just accept. No question asked. You said that you are the messenger. I accept you, O oh my husband, as a messenger of Allah. He went to his close friend, Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr said, if you said that you are a prophet, I accept what you say because the prophet Muhammad never lied before. That's why Abu Bakr was given the title as Siddiq. The man that always yeah, respond to the truth. And then he talked to his cousin, the youngest, that is Ali bin Abi Talib. This is the three person who entered Islam. A woman, his wife, a friend, Abu Bakr, and the close family, there is Ali bin Abi Talib. And then from there, the only thing he does is he calls people, all oh people, all oh mankind, ayyuhannas kulu la ilaha illallah, let us worship the true God. 
is one Allah and you'll be successful here and the hereafter. That is all that the Prophet invite the people. Calling them to come back to worship one true God to be like a big family that we are all children of Adam and Eve. We are no stranger to one another. That is the mission of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To unite all the different color, race, nation, tribe to become one big family. Brothers and sisters, whether this man is the greatest man in history or not, it's been proven by all the historians. Even they are not Muslim, they admit who is this great man. We have a list of these people, the orientalists, the people who are historians talk about this great man. But just an example, just an example, Never in the history of all prophets, we know Prophet Noah alayhi salam, yeah, is the first messenger of God and he called his nation to worship one God for 950 years. 950 years he called his people to come back to God. He don't even have more than 80 followers. All other prophets, they don't have a follower than more than 1,000 people. Prophet Muhammad in 23 years, just 23 years, the whole landscape of the Arab Peninsula changed. In 23 years, all the idols, 360 idols that present 360 tribes in Mecca, all is being destroyed by their own people, not by Prophet Muhammad. By the people who worship this idol after they became Muslim, they destroy all this so-called man-made God. And that is the mission of Prophet Muhammad wasalam, to free humans from worshipping stone, wood, human, desire, things, to worship only one true God. In 23 years, no history in the world that can prove that there is a prophet before him that can change yeah, the landscape of uh, an area in 23 years. None. Allahu Akbar. It's a history that if you know, then you know what you should do. We have been a Muslim for more than 20 years. We don't even call one person to Islam yet. Can you imagine what is happening to us? Because we don't care. We don't feel for each other. Every single day, Prophet Muhammad will go out and call people back to God. And then, he will pray to Allah at night. Raise his hand up high to the sky and say, Oh Allah, you are the one who gives guidance. I have conveyed your message every single day until he died. He care for everybody. But now the mission of Prophet Muhammad is not being carried out by a lot of people today. May Allah guide us, brothers and sisters. You must understand the mission of Prophet Muhammad and how he started his mission. He started his mission not only by speech to his own noble character. Very humble. You know he has four characters. This is my ending for the short break. Four noble character of Prophet Muhammad. If you want to be a successful person here and hereafter, please remember these four noble character. Number one, Al Amin. What is Amin? The trustworthy. That you can trust. People can trust you with anything. Number two, Siddiq. Siddiq is a person who never speaks except what is right. He never speak based on his desire, but based on the guidance of God. Number three, tablik. Tablik means he has the sharing spirit. Anything that he receives from God, he will never hide. He always convey to other people. Number four, the last one is Fatana. Do you know where is Fatana, sister? Where is Fatana? 
What is Fatana, brothers? What is Fatana, brothers? Give it to all of you to decide. What is Fatana? Now, it's very important for all Muslims to understand the four noble character of Prophet. Fatana means, means what? Okay. We'll come back after the short break. Uh, to all the sisters and brothers, once again, we end with a question just now about what is Fatana. I think this answer will come to you later on, inshallah. Yeah? Maybe next week or after next week, inshallah. <laughs> Do you want the answer now? Yeah. Oh, you want the answer now. Are you ready to pay it for the answer? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, Fatana, because knowledge. Uh, is very important. Islam is based on knowledge. Islamic religion always based on knowledge. Islam is not a blind faith. It is a faith of knowledge. It is for people who think. Now, Fatana means wisdom. Fatana means wisdom. You must have wisdom. In conveying the message, if you don't have the wisdom, then you will fail to convey the message to the people because people may have a lot of questions people may have a lot of doubts people may argue but you must use a lot of wisdom one of the wisdom that the Prophet ﷺ did say to us he said Man kana akhir, whoever believe in Allah in the day of judgment if you want to say anything you only make sure that what you say is true if not, silent is always better. Silent can be wisdom too sometimes. Not to speak sometimes is good. Then to speak but you are not telling the truth. You are lying, you know, you are gossiping, you are badbiting, it's better not to say anything. Just keep yourself silent, inshallah. Now, brothers and sisters, let us go back a quick one to this man that we have been discussing earlier, Muhammad. Why he is so important and why there are so many followers that follow him until today? Because he is a man who never think for himself. He is a leader that is so simple to the extent he said that al-bazaza, simplicity is something that Allah loves most. He can be a king if he wants to be a king because the people have offered him a kingship. But he said, no. He can be the richest person if he wants. Because the people have gathered all the wealth and said, what do you want from us, Muhammad? If you want to be the richest among us, we'll give you all the money, that you, all the gold and silver you want. If you want to be a leader among us, we'll appoint you as a leader. You just say, name it, we'll give it to you. But only one in return will ask you a favor. Stop your mission. Don't disturb us. Don't call us to one God. We are happy with what we are. But the Prophet, he just can't do that. He cannot betray the mission that Allah has given him. The duty of all Prophet is to call people to the truth. To the true God. Call them back to God. Like how they were created. Brothers and sisters, you will be surprised to know that our origin, we all believe in Allah, in one God. Before we were in this world, we were in the world of the soul. The world of the soul, the spiritual world. Alam Arwa. And when we was in Alam Arwa, when we, our soul is there, God asked us, Alas to be Rabbikum, am I not your creator? Am I not your Lord? Every single soul, that time, there's no Chinese soul, Indian soul, Pakistani soul, Malay soul, no. This soul. Then this soul was transferred to this next world, Alam Rahim, in our mother's womb. And that time, we also do not know whether you are born a Chinese, an Indian, a Pakistani, or we don't know. But we are inside now, it's processing. And God came and asked us, Alas to be Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? We said, 
قالوا بلا yes of course you are Allah then we come to the third world alam dunya this is our world now many people have gone bypass this world from Rahim they just go back to alam barzah but we were able to come to the third world the middle world alam dunya alam dunya is divided into two categories according to the teaching of Allah the teaching of Islam The first category is alam fitra. Every child is born pure and clean. We do we are not born sinful no. We are born sinless. Even if Adam have committed a sin earlier, but we do not inherit the sin of anybody. Every child is born clean and pure. Our prophet Muhammad said, "Kullu maulid yulad ala fitra." Every child is born clean and pure. It is the environment, the parent who will change them. And it's very true. What the Prophet said is so true. It is our parent who have changed all of us. You will have a parent who are very obedient to Allah, very faithful to Allah. You will be taught to be faithful. But if your parent don't care about your akhirat, then you become a person even you are muslim but you become a person who don't care about your future you don't pray you don't fast you don't do what you must do as a muslim so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remind us about that we are all born the same meaning we are all born as muslim fitra means muslim but later on my father my mother they are all chinese so i was brought as a chinese and they are buddhist so i become a buddhist this is very common if our parents are hindus and then you are born from there you'll be a hindu it's common that's what the parent want from you but alhamdulillah because we want to know what is right not just follow the tradition not become a blind follower then we start to make our own research i want to know god and that's why prophet muhammad was sent but in the same time this man was so great like i said in 23 years he changed the whole landscape of makkah and medina the two city is known until today as the holy sacred city of the muslim this is the two cities that even the president of russia and the president of america cannot come in The only license to allow them to come in is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Without this La ilaha, even you are the king, you are emperor, you are not allowed to enter this land. Who make the law is a divine law, not made by anybody. It is from God to keep this place pure and clean from all the mushrikeen. from all the people who commit shirk until today the law stays yeah, this is called divine law and what the prophet muhammad sallallahu remind us again before he passed away he was reminded by allah and this is something i like to remind all of us because we love our prophet so much that we are prepared to die for him but you never see anybody who loves Moses or Jesus will prepare to die for him no because he is a man that is more dear to us than our parents sometimes he have sacrificed everything for us to the end to the last day of his breath he still remember us and he pray for us now he was reminded by Allah kul innama ana basharun mislukum ana basharun mislukum o muhammad tell the people that you are a human a man like all of them now he have to make it very clear because he know that his people love him so dearly He got to make sure that nobody worship him after he died. And that's why he do not allow anybody to draw an image of him when he was alive. 
is forbidden. People can make any movies, whether it's Hollywood, Bollywood, any wood. Okay? But if they want to make a movie of Muhammad, they cannot have his face. But other than Muhammad, all faces go. Because it's up to them. They can make somebody to look like this prophet, but not Muhammad sallallahu This is all the sign why he was so special, why he is different compared with other prophets. He has to make it very clear, Ana basharun mislukum. I am a man, a man like all of you. But what is the difference between he and us as a man? Yuha ilayya. Annama ilahukum ilahu. The difference, I receive the revelation. That's all. I'm a prophet. You are no prophet. I receive the revelation. You don't receive revelation. You have good dreams, yes. We may have good dreams, brother and sister. But we don't receive any revelation. If somebody comes, I got a revelation last night. <laughs> then say, you are shaitan. <laughs> Nobody can say he can have any revelation. Finish. The revelation stop. Because only in this book, al quran al Karim, the only book of Allah, that Allah revealed one beautiful ayah. Aliyawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. Today I have perfected my religion for you. That means there's no more new religion is going to come after this, and there's no more divine book is going to reveal after that. It's finished. It's perfected. And I completed my favor for you, and I have chose Islam as a religion for all humanity. This is what Allah said. That's why the Quran will never change. And we will never wait for another new book anymore. It is comprehensive. It covers everything from the day you were born until you die. Every single thing that you need in this world is being listed in the Quran. Just you must have the knowledge. You must learn about the beauty of the Quran. The difference between we and Muhammad is he is a man like how we are, we are human. He eat, he drink, he sleep, he have children, he married, he fall sick, and he died. But when he was healthy, he was a prophet. He received a revelation. And then he remind us through the reminder of the reminder of Allah. Faman kana Rabbi, whoever have a good intention. Whoever have hope to meet God, if we have the intention to meet God, do we have the intention to meet God, brother and sister? I don't hear you, sisters. Only some brothers say yes. Do you want to meet Allah? Yes. yes, we have to meet Him. Whether you like it or not, you have to go back to Him. No, 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 so go. <laughs> There's no, no. Death is certain. No one can escape death. No. al Qadim on the 15 to 21 is going to organize a special camp called the Great Escape. This is our youth camp every year we organize. It's an international camp. You know, we have students from uh, all uh, different countries who will participate with us. You will know about that if you come to our website, al Qadim website, inshallah. Now, he said to us, through the revelation of Allah, whoever have the intention to meet Allah, God, where God is pleased with you. Of course, we do not want to meet God when He is not pleased with us. You know, at the end of the day, there's only two places to go, brother and sister. Where to go? Whether you want to go to aircon or hot con. <laughs> if you choose. You want to go to hell, the door is also open. You want to go to paradise, you decide. Allah said, I show you two ways, you decide. So he sent this man, the great man Muhammad, who always remind his people, I am a man. When people try to admire him, he always remind them, Ana Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, 
Abduhu wa Rasul. I am Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the grandson of Abdul Muttalib, and I am the servant of God and His messenger. He always remind his people, don't worship me. I am a human like all of you. If you love me, follow my teaching. That's all you have to do. Follow my teaching. Man kana yarju riqa'a rabbi, man kana yarju riqa'a rabbi, whoever have the intention to meet God, that God will be pleased with you, fali yakmal amalan saliha. You just have to use your time wisely to engage yourself in righteous deed. What is righteous deed? Everything that Allah wants you to do, you do it for His sake and your way of doing it, you follow His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad Why? Because He is the best example. He is an icon. You just name it. To be a good youngster, look at him when he was young. How helpful yeah, and how honest yeah, and how trustworthy he was. You will talk about business. If you want to be a businessman, look at him when he was a businessman. You want to talk about a husband, look at him. As a husband, not only have one wife, you go back to his, he had 11 wives. But none of the wives complain about him. We like to complain. <laughs> yeah. The people are talking about Muhammad now. What is the problem? None of the wife, the prophet, talk bad about him. And you are talking bad about him. Something is very wrong with that, the guy sometimes. You know, maybe they are jealous of him. You know? <laughs> Even one they cannot handle. Now you have somebody can handle 11. But again, you have seen the video just now telling us he is not a man who follows his desire. You know the first wife he had is Khatija. Khatija was how old at the time, sisters? 40. Muhammad was what, what age at the time? 25. How many years different? 1, 5, 15. Today, if you marry that kind of person, the, the man can be older always, not the woman. When the woman is older, then you have a lot of pressure from your family, number one. You know? The second, the society also will start to talk about you. But there's no issue. At that point of time, there's no issue. Yeah? But today, people want to create an issue out from no issue. Yeah? These people have nothing to do. We should have called them to do something better than that. You know? This is just an example. And then he said, engage yourself in righteous deed. But remember, all the prophet was sent to remind all of you, when you do anything that is good, don't commit shirik. yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahada. While you're doing good things, don't commit shirik. Like now you have people who commit shirik by going to the grave. With good intention, you go to the grave, you pray for them, not asking them to pray for you. Don't do that anymore. Today you have people who go to the grave and ask the people who died to give you something. There is something very, very wrong. Even Prophet Muhammad do not allow anybody to visit his grave oftenly. Once a while you visit his grave and give salam. Salamu alaikum. Ya Rasulullah wa rahmatullah wa Finish. And you face the qibla and make dua. Don't face his grave while you're making dua. Because the beauty of Islam, Islam is here to free us from worshipping anyone else except Allah. And when you talk to God, you have a direct communication. No intermediate, no more. Direct to Allah. This makes us very special. We have Imam, yes? But when you want to pray, you don't need to wait for the Imam to come. You can do the prayer by yourself. There is one thing very special for us. You can pray where you are, when you want to pray, when the time is on. You can do it by yourself, with the, ju with the Jamaah, with the group. Anywhere you can do your prayer. Yeah. This is something I like to remind all the good brothers and sisters today. And in the same time, as a leader, we know what the Prophet ﷺ was he was the leader that was loved by all his ummah. And even the enemy loved him so much. Even his enemy, because when he faced his enemy, 
And when his enemy is at rest, meaning there's no war now, if they're injured, he will send medication to them. He don't treat anybody as an enemy until they declare war with the Muslim. Until they declare war. Never once the Prophet start any kind of war in the history of Islam. He always would have all the wisdom and patience when people kill the Muslim. He will send a delegate and tell them, is it what you want? Is this what you want? You want, you love to kill people just because they believe in one God? We don't kill anybody who don't believe in one God. You never see any Muslim kill anybody who are not yet Muslim. Now I call the sisters and the brother who are here not yet Muslim. I would like all the, the people here, the student, the legacy committee also address this way, not yet Muslim. Because when you use the term not non-Muslim, you are judging them. You have no right to judge them. Allah in the Quran said, Zalika bi annahum qawmun la ya'lamun. The people who are not yet Muslim is because they do not know what is Islam. And why they do not know what is Islam, brother and sister? Why? Why they do not know what is Islam? Why? It's because we never talk to them about Islam. We talk to them about our subject, our food, about where to eat, you know, what movie to go and see. We to talk to them about many things, not about Islam. Come to religion, nafsi, nafsi. It's like mine, my property. Yeah? Not a share property. That is the reason. That's why you have no right to call them non-Muslim. You have the right to say not yet Muslim. Why? Because we hope that they will become our brother and sister in faith. But when you chop them, you stem them, you labor them, then it's not easy for you to get close to them anymore. We have failed to do that. Our Prophet ﷺ was sent not to judge anybody, rahmatalil alamin, to bring mercy. I share with you one of the most powerful prayers from the Prophet when he was on his way to Taif. After the death of Khatija, the beloved wife. And again in the history, when the Prophet married the first, yeah, the first time he got married, he only have one wife. And not a young girl again, a widow, a widow who have married twice. Khatija have married twice. This is the third time with Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. So when Khatija passed away, his uncle passed away, he needed a lot of moral support. He was on his way to a Taif. Yeah. It's in the in, in the highland. It's like in Cameron Highland or you get Kenting Highland. Yeah? But no casino, of course. <laughs> yeah? So he was on his way there. He was not received by his family with flowers. They throw stone at him. To the extent that some of his helper was with him, will have to cover him, but they can't take it anymore because of the stone. They feel the pain. They have to carry the prophet out. And his rope, the jubba, the white jubba, turned into red color because of the blood. Yeah? Because he was bleeding all the time. Then he was resting under a tree outside from Ta'if. The angel that is in charge of the hills was commanded by Allah to visit the Prophet. And they came to the Prophet and asked him for permission. Just one instruction. Destroy the people of Ta'if. The whole people of Ta'if will be destroyed. Angel who was in charge of the hill came and asked him for that permission. What did he say? He said to them, to the angel, Inni lam ub'as la'an. I was not sent to cause any destruction. I was not sent 
to cause any unrest to any place and anyone. Walakini bu istu da'iyan warahma. I was sent as a savior and a caller. That's all. And then what he said, Oh Allah, give guidance to these people of Ta'if. Allahumma di qawmi. Give guidance to them. This is what he said. Oh Allah, give guidance to them. They injured me, they throw stone at me because they do not know who I am. They do not know that I'm here to save them. I don't blame them. Don't punish them. Give guidance to them. If the first generation fail to accept the guidance, give guidance to their offspring. You see, the Prophet have a vision. He never give up. If the people who are there now in Ta'if do not accept Islam, give guidance to their children. And Allah is so kind to the Prophet. Yeah, after a while, the whole Ta'if become Muslim. Allahu Akbar. The whole Ta'if become Muslim. Because of the prayer of the Prophet. He's a loving Prophet who cares and very patient. He's not like us. We don't, nobody throws stone at us yet. We are asking God to punish them already. <laughs> oh Allah curse them. Oh Allah punish them. Not even one stone. You see how, how unjust are we? How impatient we are. Did our Prophet taught us? No. And at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us with two ayat. One, Allah said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam lifestyle, you have all the best examples. As a salesman, as a husband, who is so kind and loving to the wife, to the extent that the Prophet said, Khairukum khairukum li ahli wa ana khairu li ahli. He said to all the men, You cannot be the best man. You cannot be a good man until your wife confirm it. If your friend confirm, he's my good friend. Ta uh, achi, they say. <laughs> you must have bribed him for tetare, and that's why they say you are good. No. The Prophet said, the best among the men are the men who are best to his wife. Don't show your friend that I'm the best, but you are not best to your wife. Yeah. You go to the five-star hotel to have your dinner buffet with your friend, but with your wife, you go to Warung Warung. You know? <laughs> All the Warung Warung, uptown, downtown. You know? <laughs> but with your friend, five-star hotel, buffet. No. You should bring your wife to all these five stars, seven stars. If they have seven stars, seven stars. That's how you should treat your wife. That's how our Prophet taught his Ummah. He's the best father. MashaAllah. He's the best leader. Everything you want, you can look at him as an example. Because he was sent by Allah to be the best example. And he's not just a leader for you here, he will be a leader for you hereafter. He's not here to lead you, he will be there waiting for you and give his intercession shafa'ah. That's how yeah, responsibility our Prophet is. He will be there waiting for us. Allah said in the Quran, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِكْتَكُونَ الشُّهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونُ رَسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Indeed, we created you people as a witness to all mankind and the Prophet will be a witness upon you. You are Muslim. Your duty is to be a good Muslim and your duty is to share Islam with other people. If you fail to do that, I will be a witness to you in the Day of Judgment. The Prophet have said, Convey even one message that you have learned from Prophet Muhammad. One saying from Prophet Muhammad you have learned, convey, don't keep it. Don't betray the knowledge. The knowledge must be shared. Alhamdulillah, we have done our duty. But we did not say that it's enough until we die. We have, alhamdulillah, converted thousands of people, alhamdulillah. You know, from... 70s until now. Alhamdulillah, before my mother passed away, when she was bedridden, we called her, never give up, and she made the shahada. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. 
we don't give up with anybody. We just came back from Japan, a 79 years old man, we were talking to him and he made shahada. We never give up on anybody. So don't ever give up your mission as the follower of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And lastly, before we come to the Q&A session, our Allah subhanahu wa remind us in the Quran, he said, Kul in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbitkum Allah. Wa yaqfir lakum zunubakum, wallahu ghafoor rahim. O Muhammad, tell the people, whoever say, I love Allah. We all, do we love Allah, brothers and sisters? Yes. Do we love Allah, brothers and sisters? Yes. yes. I want you to express yourself because Allah loves people who can express themselves. Do we love Allah? Yes. yes. Good. Everybody said they love Allah. Then the Prophet was reminded by Allah, whoever claimed that he loved Allah, tell them, O oh Muhammad, they have to follow your teaching. Without following the teaching of the Prophet Wasallam, the sunnah of the Prophet, you have no right to claim that you love Allah. Because Allah put a condition. Nobody can say that he loved Allah if they disrespect or they go again the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. Whoever follow the sunnah of the Prophet, I will love them, Allah said. Yuhbibkum Allah, when Allah loves us, He forgives all our sins. Because Allah is all forgiving and all merciful. And this is what we are here today. We want to prove to ourselves that we are not here just to listen to the speech, but we want to change. We want to love Allah. We want to love our Prophet Muhammad so that we love fellow mankind. By loving Allah and the Prophet, you love everybody. You will love your friend, your neighbor. There will come a time that you will not even hate your enemy anymore because there's nothing to hate them. They are bad because maybe they do not know what they do is wrong. So it's your duty to reach out with them, make them understand, pray for them, so one day they will change, inshallah. So brothers and sisters, before we go to the Q&A session once again, I hope all of you will try your best to make an intention tonight. Just, just try to fulfill one ayah. Fulfill one ayah. You can be a good Muslim. What is the ayah? An ayah that I will start to recite. I hope all of you can follow me. I just start and you can follow because most of us memorize this. I will start Qul inna salati Alhamdulillah This is what we have been talking and telling Allah Say Allah want you to declare Say to yourself Indeed all my prayer Whether it's fardu or optional All my sacrifices whether it's big or small, my living, whatever I do in this life, from the day I open my eye until I close my eye, and my dying, sooner or later we have to die, brother and sister. We have to die because this is not a permanent world. Life that is permanent is not here. It's in the hereafter. And then we say to Allah, my dying, my living, my sacrifice, my prayer, everything I do in this world, Lillahi Rabbil, is purely for you, O Allah, alone. Not for people. You are not supposed to honor your tradition, protect your tradition to go against religion. Religion must come first. Allah is awalun, He is the first. His command comes first. He must be first in our life. Our Prophet's teaching must be first. I know we have a lot of tradition. I myself have a lot of tradition. I'm a Chinese. Chinese have their own tradition. But any tradition that go against the Sunnah, you must abandon that tradition for the sake of Allah. Change before it's too late. Anything against the teaching of Islam is our duty to uphold the religion more than tradition. Because when you die, Allah is not going to ask you about your tradition. 
Allah is going to ask you about your deen, about your religion. And lastly, remember what Allah said, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah who have all the power to do what he please he make a declaration he have all the power whatever Allah want it to happen he just have to use the two powerful letter two powerful letters kun kap and nun kun fayakun be and is be that's all he have to say anytime when Allah want to say something if you want it to happen he just said but he said now, I will never change the situation, the condition of a person, of any one of us until we want to change. Do you want to change, sisters? Yes. Yeah, so, so I think about 50 of them just said yes. <laughs> Do you want to change, sisters? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Do you want to change, brother? Yes. Yes. We all must change. For the better we want to change to be more caring more loving more sharing ummah so that we feel for each other if you can't do that well because you don't have knowledge you must seek the knowledge we do organize all these courses that courses we do have a lot of activity going on contact us get to know al qadim inshallah yeah, then you know what we are doing yeah. and may allah bless us and now we are open for the q a session inshallah yeah. The Q&A session now, here. Take a break again. Alhamdulillah, we welcome a lot of questions from the brothers and sisters because questioning is the key of knowledge and even Allah remind us zikri in kuntum la ta'lamu ask people of knowledge if you know not and aswa'al miftah ilm and asking is the key to knowledge now there are so many questions I will try to see what uh, is more important why did the early prophet was sent to the Israel not to other races? It's because Allah have ordained it to happen in that manner. The same God who have sent all the other prophet and prophet Muhammad. That's why if you look in the Bible, you look in the Torah, you will see the same thing. And that's why the children of Israel always feel that they are the chosen one. That they are the children of God. To the extent that they believe that other than Israel have no right to God. Yeah? The blood that flow in them are the blood of God. Well, they are very strained people. Yeah? Very strained. That's why they are a nation who have no respect to other than their own people. If you go back to the history, you know what really happened to them and what is happening now. Yeah? They don't have any respect to other than them. They have no respect to any laws except their own law. You can say any United Nations can say anything, America can say anything, Russia can say anything, but if they want to kill, they just kill anybody they like. Other than Israel, they feel that they have no right at all except the children of Israel. You can go deeper if you want, and how do we prove the origin the originality of Quran? You can prove by looking at what was revealed at the time of the Prophet until today never changed. You can go to anywhere, to China, to Russia, you know, to Africa, to any part of the world. You can call the people to recite the Quran. It will never change. Even they say today with the internet, people are doing some changes. How can we detect? Inshallah, it's very easy to detect. Because majority of the Muslims who are practicing Muslim, they memorize the Quran. Now, it is a miracle. It's not easy for you to memorize the whole book and you cannot forget. It's very difficult. 
It, in, only with the help of Allah, you can do that. If just today, if you have learned, you listen to me for two hours, if after this, I ask you, what did I say from the beginning? I don't remember, I don't think anyone can have the same answer. You know? Like that is we, being human. We are not the same, but with Allah's will, He said that, I revealed the Quran, the final book, I will protect the authenticity of this book. It's a very unique book, brothers and sisters. If you have time, please be more serious about the Quran. Yeah. How did he manage, our Prophet, how did he manage being both the leader and still be, be their friends? The Prophet is a man, he's a very humble man. He lived like a servant. He can be like a king, but he chose to be like a servant. He don't even like to eat yeah, on the table. Using the table, he like to eat like a slave on the floor. No, he can have all the luxurious life he wants, but he chose not to because he must set a good example. And one of the signs that Prophet Muhammad was accepted by the king of Rome is when they sent a representative to them, the king of Rome asked the delegate, who is his follower? If he claimed that he's a prophet, who is his follower? They said, majority of the followers are the weak, the poor, and the oldest. The elders, the weak and poor, and the elder. Then they immediately they trigger, they said, this was been mentioned by the early scripture that the Prophet will just start from there. He's not here for fame. He's here to serve humanity. Then the person that he always tried to approach us as the weak and the poor people. It's easier for them to respond to the truth. Yeah? I tried to follow Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's teaching to love Allah, but I'm always haunted by my sins. I'm so confused. This may be little out of topic but is there any chance for me to be better than I am now of course the door of repentance is always open and Allah loves those who repent to him Allah knows that we have been created as a human and we will commit sin that's why the prophet said Kullu bani adam wa khair in tawabun. when you reach the age of maturity before maturity there's no sin there's fitrah in this world there are two the first before maturity you have fitrah alam fitrah but when you bypass that zone, balik, then you start to commit sin. And that's why the Prophet said, the children of Adam that commit sins, Allah loves them when they repent. Allah still loves you. To the extent that there's an ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Whoever repent to him, pamantaba wa amana wa amila amalan saleha. Whoever repent to Allah with a sincere repentance, with a sincere repentance, and then he renew his faith. That means he's coming back to have the right faith and act on righteous deeds. I, Allah, will not just forgive him, but I will change the 10 years of sin or the, the, the 10 tons of sin that he has committed into goodness. Allah is so kind. He do not just forgive you, but if you have committed sin for 30 years of sin, he is going to transfer the 30 years of sin into goodness. To show us how loving and caring and forgiving Allah is. So don't give up hope with Allah. Don't give up hope. There are two types of sin that we must be careful. One is a sin that Allah didn't forgive you. Number one is shirik, while well, you die committing shirik. If you die before you, 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 uh, I mean you repent before you die, Allah still forgive you. Number one. The second thing, you must not forget that the Prophet said, Kullu ummati mu'afiyah illal mujahirin. All my ummah who commit sin, Allah will forgive them. Except Mujahirin. Except Mujahirin. Mujahirin means a person who commits sin 
openly. You may commit sin secretly, may Allah forgive you, and it's easy to be forgiven if you commit a secret sin because you are shy of doing something bad, so you do it secretly being a human. But if you do it openly, you are sending another message across. That's very, very bad. Meaning you are telling the people, don't worry, you can do the same thing. Nobody can come after you. You are sending the wrong message across. People who commit sin openly is like they're challenging the authority. Then, of course, God will deal with you fairly. Yeah? And there's also uh, an, a question. You told earlier that Mecca and Medina are two holy cities that no mushrikin can enter. How about the Shia? Were they mushrik? There's many groups, there are some who go too, much, too extreme, they can be a mushrik. But those who are not extreme, they are still a Muslim. Now this term Shia and this other, other name that we are so used to it is just a term. Anything, if they believe that Prophet Allah is one, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, only they love Ali, no issue for us. But when they criticize Abu Bakr, Omar, it becomes an issue. But if they say, no, no, we still believe in Abu Bakr, we believe Omar, only we prefer Ali more because we know Ali more than other Khalifa. No problem. It's just like me, if people ask me, who among the Khalifa that you are more attached to? I said Omar because I came to Islam through the history of Omar. I read the history, life history of Omar, then I became to Islam. So, of course, I'm more uh, aware about life history of Omar, but I still love Abu Bakr, Ali, Osman, and all other companions. But if one denied that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, the last messenger, then he is no more a Muslim. But if he do not make it clear to other people, when people ask you, are you Muslim? Yes, I am a Muslim. Of course, then you cannot stop them from entering Mecca until you are sure that they are not a Muslim. What is your view about people who are too straight on following the mazhab instead of the sunnah of the Prophet It's again, it's again another issue today like mazhab. Mazhab is not from any of the scholars. No scholar call their student to follow them. No scholar do that. Abu Hanifa is the oldest scholar among the four scholars. And he was a scholar that met some of the companions of the Prophet. Neither he said, follow me. He command his student, whenever you want to quote my name, make sure you have the knowledge of my reference. You must know where do I refer to. This is the saying of Abu Hanifa. He forbid any of his students or his followers to quote his saying without knowing where is his reference. Now his student, one of the students is Imam Malik. And Imam Malik is a teacher of Imam Shafi. And all the great Imam never said, follow me, I am Mr. Right. No. They said, we are human like you, we may commit some mistake here and there. Whatever we say that do not contradict the Quran and Sunnah, follow. It's a sal hadith for who mazhabi. They say, any hadith that is authentic, you are following the Sunnah, that is our mazhab. What is mazhab? Mazhab means ways, ideology. That's what mazhab means. Not like today, a lot of people are quoting, I belong to this school of thought, belong to that school of thought, without any reference. I just share with the sisters and the brother. Majority of us here are Shafi'i or Hanafi. Are we Shafi'i or Hanafi? Majority Malays are Shafi'i. Good. Now, just you know, share with me this experience. Read the du'a iftitah that you use to recite when you start your prayer. Can you please read it aloud? Let us hear. Du'a iftitah after Allahu Akbar, the du'a before Fatiha. How do you recite the du'a iftitah? Please start now. Two, three.
who do we follow? Who do we follow? Did Imam Shafi'i taught us to recite Dua Iftita in that manner? What do you think? I dare to say to all of you, because I have studied about Imam Shafi'i's book. I have to study. It's part of my research, but I have to study about Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, Maliki, and Hanbali. Whoever said that Imam Shafi'i taught you to recite Allahu Akbar Kabira, Walhamdulillah Kathira, Wa Subhanallah Bukrata Wasila, Wa Jahtu Wa Jalila Jifatra Sama, until Anna our Muslimin, he make a great fitna to Imam Shafi'i. But Imam Shafi'i did recite Wa Jahtu Wa Jalila Lila Jifatra Sama, Wa Tiriya, Wa Jahtu. But he never said Allahu Akbar Kabira. But Imam Shafi'i never end wa anna awal Muslim. There's still long dua. We cut the one after anna awal Muslim and we put a new one in front. We have our own modification in dua iftita. Shafi'i never recite Allahu Akbar Kabira. Allahu Akbar Kabira is also one dua iftita. But if you recite Allahu Akbar Kabira, you must stop at wa asila. Don't combine with wajahtu. Because it is not the way of the Prophet, neither any of the four Imam recite in that manner. Wajahtu until the end, not under wa anna on until the end, wa ilaik, wa atubu ilaik, there's dua, wajahtu. Or you said Allah Akbar Kabira, Alhamdulillah Kathira, wa subhanallah, wa tarata wa sira, stop there. Or you can say Allahumma ba'id bayna wa bayna khataya, ya kama ba'ta bayna mashi wa maghribi, until the end. Or you can say subhanak Allahumma bihamdika, wa tabaraka smuka, wa ta'ala jadduka, wa layrak. Have you heard this du'a before? Can you see how alien we are? No? We don't know what the Prophet taught us. The Prophet taught us 12 different types of du'a. You choose any of the 12, no problem. But don't make your own du'a. This is just an example. Just the beginning of the prayer. And now go deeper yet. <laughs> From the beginning, you are not following the Imam anymore. But you say, I'm following Imam. It's just easy to claim that you are following Imam without knowledge. And this is very, very unfair to the great Imam. You are blaming as though as he taught you. He never taught us to do that. Yeah, this is just an example. You can follow all this great Imam by following the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah? None of them is perfect and they never said they are perfect. They say whatever we said that is with the Quran and Sunnah, do not contradict the Quran, follow. Whatever I was saying that contradict, you have to abandon it. Imam Shafi also said that. Anytime you come across my saying again the Sunnah, you just throw it away. Don't follow me anymore. I'm not responsible to what you do anymore. Yeah, I'm just a human. I may be right. I may be wrong. But are we better than them? No, we are not better than the great Imam. Yeah? But you cannot say that. You must follow them. I was taught before that when I first became a Muslim, if you don't have an Imam a Mazhab, you die, you have problem. Because when they ask you in the kubur, the angel come and man Imam Muka, who is your Imam? You must say Shafi'i. <laughs> you know there are so many great scholars. You have scholar Nuqman bin Sabit, you have scholar Muhammad bin Idris. Do you know who is Nuqman bin Sabit, sisters? You know who is Muhammad bin Idris? How can you don't know Muhammad Idris? Muhammad Idris is Shafi'i. His real name is Muhammad Idris. Shafi'i is the name of his grandfather. When I go to Pakistan and India, I say, You know Nu'man bin Sabit? I say, What? Nu'man? Who is this Nu'man? I say, Are you Hanafi? Yes, Hanafi, Hanafi. And you don't know Nu'man bin Sabit? Oh, strange. Hanafi is not his name. It's his nickname. Abu Hanifa. His real name is Nu'man bin Thabit. Just another example. To show us how, yeah, how alien we are. Yeah. There are so many questions here, sisters and brothers. I may not be able to answer all. 
Okay, may I know how Muhammad treat the not yet Muslim during war? The Prophet never said anyone, one day surrender. If they're engaged in the warfare, one day surrender, the Prophet will never cause harm to them anymore. The Prophet will leave them in peace. Remember, the Prophet and the companion was chased out from Mecca. They oppressed them, they tortured them, so they have to migrate. When they came back, the Fatul Mecca, the Fatul Mecca, the opening of Mecca, what do the Mushrikeen, yeah, the people, the pagan, the disbeliever, said about Muhammad? Muhammad asked them, called them out, and asked them, what do you think what will happen to all of you today? You have chased us out. Yeah? You took our property. You torture our people. What do you think we will do to you today? Immediately, people of Mecca say, you are a noble man. You are so good. We know that only good thing will come from you. Of course, they, they, whatever they want to say, they say, if he is a mean person, he said, today, is the day of punishment. No. He said to them, Antum tulaka. From today, you are free. We don't take any revenge. No. You are free. Last time, because we are weak, you oppress us. Now we are strong, we will never oppress you. Because, like a prophet did, no compulsion in religion. But later on, they keep on yeah, breaking the law, betray the Muslim. After they have treaty, they betray again. Then there was a time God sent a revelation to say that these people cannot live in the Holy Land anymore. Then only the Prophet called them and asked them, whoever wants to stay on in this holy area, they must be a Muslim. If not, they have to choose to live outside from the Holy Land. Yeah. Outside from the Holy Land is not that far away. Yeah. If you go to Mecca, halfway from Jeddah, then you come to a, a border, they will give you a sign. Yeah. This is the Holy Land, start from here. Then you cannot go in anymore. Yeah. Why? Because to make sure there are peace in that area. You know? So, brother and sister, how many times do, do I have now? Yeah. It's up to me, yeah. <laughs> Again, people are asking, how do you think about the Shia? Are they Muslim? Anybody who says, Ashadu Allah, Ida Illumma, wa Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah, if they believe in what they claim, they are Muslim. Unless they say that there is a prophet after Muhammad, out. They cannot be a Muslim anymore. Yeah? But whether the ideology, if you look at the history of Shia, is more on political motivated. Yeah, not ideology motivated, but political motivated. This is a question in Bahasa. Kenapa orang belum lagi Islam tidak dibenarkan berada di Mekah dan Medina sedangkan pada zaman Nabi Sahabat? I, I think I have answered this. Yeah? It was allowed earlier than later on because they keep on cause a lot, causing a lot of mischief and they start to create, create a lot of problem within yeah, the people and they were asked to leave. To live in peace. Nobody forced them. Yeah? Check maybe one more last question. One last question. So which one should I choose? Huh? I heard that Prophet Muhammad didn't say Ummati, Ummati. Ummati at his last breath. Is this the truth? Then what did he actually say? Hmm? Before the Prophet took his last breath, he did talk to one of his daughter, Fatima. Not over to the wife. The wife was excused from him and then he called Fatima. And the last prayer that the Prophet did say, like what Ali said, yeah. The last wasiat that the Prophet remind his ummah, don't forget your prayer. 
don't forget your prayer. He did make a short prayer before that. He prayed to Allah, if all of us who are going to die is going, going to go through the suffering, yeah, the sakratul maut, please Allah, gather all their suffering and let me bear their suffering. Because anyone who is going to die, they have gone through some pain. So the Prophet experienced that. He commanded the angel of death. Angel of death cannot pull the soul of the Prophet without their permission. The Prophet said, the angel of death, two things that happened only to the Prophet. Number one, wherever the Prophet died, they will be buried in that place. They are not going to move to other areas. That's why you don't see the graveyard of the Prophet. is in the graveyard with other people, no. Wherever they die, that is where they will be buried. He died in the house of Aisha, and that's where he was buried. This only applies for Prophet Muhammad. If you die, the people are not going to bury yeah, in the same house. No, they will send you far away. You know. The second thing, Prophet will never die until they give a permission. When the time comes for them to die, the angel of death has to present himself and say to them, time's up. And then they said, okay, then they pull. To us, if they say, time out, no, 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 please, please. I have many things to do. Yeah, don't do that. If you can corrupt the angel, hey, hey, take some money from me, no problem. You know? And one of the evidence is Moses, alayhi salam. When the angel of death came to him, he said, time's up. He gave a punch to the angel. And the angel got to go back to God and complain. He said, oh Allah, you send me to a person who is not ready to come back to you. <laughs> so, Allah sent the angel that to go back to him again and tell him that Allah, the creator of Moses, loves to see him now. Is he ready to come and meet his God? Then the angel came back the second and said to him, Ya Moses, Allah love to see you now. Are you ready to meet him? Immediately Moses, Allah is waiting for me. I am ready. <laughs> of course, if king of all kings is waiting for you, why should you delay? You know, there's nothing to delay anymore. So our prophet, when he was going to die, the angel of death came and present himself and the prophet command him to pull his soul slowly. And when he said stop, he must stop. So when he pulled the soul of the prophet, he can feel the pain. He is a prophet. Allah want him to experience that. So immediately he stopped and then he asked Allah, if possible, if this is the kind of suffering all my ummah is going through, when they die, you gathered all their suffering, let me alone take the suffering. Brothers and sisters, you cannot get any person who loves the people so much like the Prophet. He still remembers all of us. Even the last breath, he still remembers all of us. Of course, he don't say, Ummati, Ummati. He just say certain prayer. And the last wasiyah is about salah. Don't forget your communication with Allah. How whatever happened, don't miss your prayer. It's very, very important. When you disconnect yourself with Allah, we are worried there is a time you have to go back to Him. Then there is a bad ending. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, being a Muslim for more than 40 years, sisters and brother, I never miss my prayer yet even once. Alhamdulillah. I always ask Allah to make sure that we will never forget Him. But we find a lot of Muslims today, they are not so careful about their communication with God. Allah don't need us, we need Him. And one of the things that He reminds us, don't forget. The first thing that I'm going to question all of you in the Day of Judgment is your prayer. When you fail that, then consider you are a failure. And prayer is very simple in Islam. You don't need to spy, buy anything. You don't need to spend anything. Everything is free. 
you cannot pray while standing, while sitting, cannot pray while sitting, while lying down. If you cannot pray while you're making wudu ablution, you can go for dry cleaning, tayamu. Yeah? Yeah? There's no way to say, ah, I have no time. Time is always there. Yeah? May Allah bless us, brothers and sisters. I know there's a lot of questions. Now, we welcome you to our center, Al Qadim Center, and PJ near Sungai Kayu Ara. We have our classes every Sunday for everyone, for Muslim, not yet Muslim, and there, people who are going to be a Muslim will do the reversion too in the same day after the class, if people are interested to become a Muslim. And we have our camp, like I said, starting on the 15th to the 21 of December. If any one of you want to know, please go to uh, Al-Qadim website, www. Al-Qadim, yeah? Al-Qadim, from then? Al dash Kadim Al Kadim K H A A D E M K H A A D E M Al dash Kadim dot com. And you go through the website, you will see what we are doing. So may Allah bless us, may Allah guide us, may Allah forgive us for our wrongdoing, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a better Muslim after this. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa bilayi tawfiqi wa la akhrida ana. Walhamdulillah. Alamin. Brother and sister, let us recite that ending prayer before we leave. Subhanakallahumma. Wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka. Wa atubu ilayk. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam.